Okay, hey everyone, this is your brother Noah, and I have my sister Candace here today, and we're just going to testify of the things that God has done in her life recently. Uh, sister, if you just want to introduce yourself and uh, let everybody know where you are at, and uh, yeah, we can go from there. So I'm Candace, and recently I got deliverance from uh, sexual sin, fornication, and also smoking weed. Amen. So yeah, we called a little while ago and prayed. And uh, prior to that, you were having like a very uh, intense pull towards those sins. And now after you've received deliverance, you're saying that you don't even really have a desire for it, huh? Nope. I'm, I've been tempted and still been able to stay free from that and just turn to God and be able to keep on the right track. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Well, I just want to, you know, say myself, like, you know, a lot of people think of deliverance just in the sense of like, you know, um, getting delivered from maybe infirmity or like things that are not related to sin. But would you be able to say yourself, like, even through deliverance, you can overcome a lot more sin effectively in your case, right? Yes. And even things like during the deliverance that I didn't even know I was battling with, were able to, I was able to be set free from that as well. Right. Amen. Yeah. There's a lot of things that are demonic that people don't even uh, realize. A lot of it kind of meshes into your personality and you just think it's who you are. But in reality, that comes from the enemy, right? Exactly. And then you were saying that you didn't even have, like, you were kind of on the fence when we were talking maybe about, like, the whole smoking weed thing because you were saying you were trying to do it for, like, uh, if you could just tell people, like, for the reason of why you were smoking weed. Yeah, again. Sure. So uh, last year, about a year ago, I was sick with my immune system attacked and ate on my nerves. And I also um, had a back injury and also my hips were injured. And so I was trying to use it for pain management. Um, but I didn't really realize that even with smoking the weed for medical reasons, it could open other doors. So right. through our conversation, I was able to switch over to something that doesn't have the high aspect so that, you know, I could be closer with God and not open those doors again. Amen. And I haven't even been tempted to go back. <laughs> Amen. That's awesome. And we were talking about that after we prayed deliverance. We were like, okay, if after you received deliverance and the demons came out, you don't have a desire to smoke weed anymore. Where was that coming from, from the first right. place, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, that Not was def God. <laughs> and Yeah, definitely. And it's very easy to justify smoking weed, like, I have a medical purpose. But you could say, I have a medical purpose for all, you know, anybody could come up with that excuse of, I have a medical purpose to go ahead and do this, right? A lot of people right. use that as a, as a justification. So praise God that the blinding came off of your eyes for that. And praise God that you don't even have a desire for those sins anymore because like a lot of people think Christianity is just forcing yourself to not do all of the sin that you actually want to do deep down in your heart. But you're saying that the right. desire for those things is just gone, huh? Yep. And it's proof that deliverance does work. Amen, it's for sure. Proof because, you know, you can want to do something and like I felt like I couldn't do it on my own. So I had to get delivered and depend on something greater than myself, you know, God, <laughs> to deliver me from those things and using you to deliver that. <laughs> Amen. It definitely is really a humbling thing, you know, to rely upon God for deliverance because you could think you do it in your own strength or that's scary or whatever. But when you choose to just trust in him, he really does deliver you. And that's awesome. Yep, and I know and when you're willing to actually lay it down. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, like before receiving deliverance, it's like internally you want to get rid of it, but it feels like there's like that blockage, like, man, why can't I stop doing this? Right. Yes. Amen. Um, so, yeah, I know you said like after you received deliverance with regards to the sexual sin, there were even some people that approached you and tempted you and you were able to yep. overcome that with no hesitancy as well, too, huh? Yep, I didn't even have to think about it. I was like, no, I'm all set. Thank you, though. And I was able to just turn it away and just continue on what God put in my heart to go to him to pray and worship and get back into my studies. Amen. Praise battle. God. And prior to the deliverance, you would have just caved most of the time you were telling me, huh? Like you would have just given into it. Yep. Like I knew in my heart that it was wrong and I knew in my heart that God, it was a sin. And that because I kept, you know, hearing the voice of God being like, that's a sin. You can't do that. But I just felt like I couldn't overcome it and I felt like I couldn't do it on my own. And I kept, you know, it didn't feel right, even if I was doing it, even after. I just felt 
guilty and gross because I knew that it was wrong. Right. And a lot of people don't realize the battle with sin is a, is a spiritual battle, right? Like, you know, when we're trying to overcome different sins... There's a spiritual force. There's demonic uh, forces there trying to hold us back from overcoming it. So it only makes sense that we can't do it on our own strength because it's a spiritual fight that we're trying to overcome the sin. So you could try and stop, do it all you want, but unless you rely upon God and his delivering power, you're just trying to do it in yep. your own might, right? Exactly. Amen. So is there anything else that you want to testify in your life that you've noticed uh, changes since receiving deliverance, like internally or anything else? let's see i've been able to do my bible studies daily and god's actually leading me to try and like start doing bible studies with other people and i just feel the change within me to do more godly things and to do more things according to his will as opposed to where before i was having a hard time getting into the word i was i just didn't feel the same inside and i also like when i being delivered from the anger like i don't feel myself getting angry anymore and I just feel closer to God overall and also closer to draw into what he has planned for me. Amen. Praise God. That's awesome because repentance is not just turning away from the bad, but it's turning away from the bad. So you do that which is righteous and you walk in holiness and fulfill God's will for your life. So I praise God that you have that as well, too. So you've already described so many things. No pull for the sexual sin, for the weed, you know, uh, not having that anger, uh, you know, and, and desire for God and reading his word. That's all a lot of change. So praise God for that. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. Amen. Is there anything else that you would want to tell people that maybe are just like on the fence about deliverance or like skeptical about it or anything else that you want to say with regards to that? I would say, even if you were in the place like I was at where, you know, it's wrong, and you know it's time to lay it down, but you feel like you can't, take that leap of faith and ask for deliverance because you can be set free. And it's only through God and Jesus' name. And sometimes it's beyond what you can do. And you need to ask a fellow brother or sister for prayer and for help and for deliverance. And, you know, we all battle things, you know, beyond us. And, you know, before coming to Christ, we are all broken. So, you know, it's normal that we're going to struggle with things and you don't have to be ashamed of it. That's what the enemy wants to convince you of. And it's okay to be open, to be vulnerable, and to know that there are you know, other people that are going to be placed in your path to help you. Yeah, for sure. Amen. I think that's really good that you said that a lot of people struggle with shame or fear or things of that nature and uh, don't want to get deliverance. But it's like, you know, if you're feeling those feelings and they're leading you to not want to get deliverance, you have to ask yourself the question as to where that blockage is coming from. Is it coming from God or the enemy, right? Yep. And I know when I first joined your deliverance group, like there is this feeling in me and I was like, oh, like I'm nervous to step out and ask for this. And I knew it was the enemy fighting me. And I also knew in my heart that it was time to lay those things down. And because I took that leap of faith while the enemy was fighting me not to, I got that deliverance because the enemy didn't want me to. Amen. He didn't want me to be free. He wanted me to stay stuck in sin. <laughs> yeah. Praise God. Well, who the sun sets free is free indeed. And I just praise God that you can testify that you're truly free. Once again, I just want to go back to the point where like, this is such a good testimony because so many people think like walking as a Christian is just like sitting on the edge of your seat, uh, barely not sinning, right? Like just still consumed by that sin, focused on that sin all day long. But it's like when you get deliverance, that internal pull over and over and over again, where, where you're feeling compelled by the enemy to do sin is gone. Like you, you mm -hmm. could still get temptations for sin, but that that bondage type, like we're not in bondage once we get set free, right? And it's such a yeah. amazing thing. And I'd like to say too, like don't be ashamed because I got saved in November of 2019. And despite how I came to Christ and I was doing, you know, more godly things, there were still things that I needed deliverance from. And don't let, you know, the fact that you were already saved, like be the reason that you don't go for deliverance because I knew that I was saved, but there's still all those roots and the stuff that needs to come up and out. And don't be that, don't allow that to be the reason why you don't keep coming to God. You know, keep coming to God, keep being honest with, you know, yourself and with the people who are helping you to get closer to God so that you can get that freedom. Yeah, if you're a Christian, that's who deliverance is for. Like some people might feel ashamed, like, oh, I'm, I'm a Christian five, ten years, I need deliverance. But it's like, that's exactly who deliverance is for, is for the children of God, right? Yep.
Amen. And we all have things that prior to being a Christian open doors that we may not have even realized prior to being a Christian that could have let in so many different spirits that we don't know are still within or still, you know, influencing our decisions. So it's important to really not be ashamed of that and just step out in faith and be like, you know what? This is something that I need help with. It's there's no shame in asking for help. (laughs) Amen. hundred percent. The Bible does say confess our sins one to another and pray for one another that we may be healed. And I believe that's like spiritual healing too, like deliverance, you know? Yes. <laughs> Amen. Well, thank you so much for sharing your testimony, sister. It's a really powerful, like just that radical change. And just, just like last week, you know, you were telling me that you were in these different sins and now you're like, you know, completely changed in oh, that yeah. regard. So praise God. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. I really appreciate you. All right. God bless you. Bye. Who shall I go? I've come to know that you are the Christ, for the lust of the world is passing away.